These two superchargers, they may look the same, but they're not. I'm Frugal Tesla Guy, and I'm going to give you a crash course in the different types of superchargers and basic supercharging etiquette. When it comes to Teslas and EVs in general, one of the most commonly asked questions usually has to do something with charging the car. Where do you charge? How often do you charge? How long does it take to charge the car? Well, typically, I start answering most of these questions by explaining the three different types of charging. Level one, also known as trickle charging. Level two, also known as destination chargers. And level three, some argue that they're not called level three, but we'll call it that just for the sake of this video. These are also known as supercharging. The last two AKA references are terms typically used by Tesla. Level one and two chargers are most commonly used at home. However, you'll also find destination chargers at hotels, hence the name destination charger. In this video, we are going to focus our energy, no pun intended, on supercharging, what it is, the different types, and basic etiquette upon plugging into a supercharging station. As if it wasn't complicated enough with different types of charging, believe it or not, there are also different types of superchargers as well. So we start off with where it all started, and that was California in 2012, when the first six superchargers were installed with a maximum output of 90 kilowatts. Less than a year later, in 2013, Tesla started installing superchargers with a max output of 120 kilowatts. This would be the standard by which all Tesla superchargers would follow for the next three years. Then, in 2016, Tesla introduced what they call the Gen 2 supercharger with a maximum output of 150 kilowatts. One year later, in 2017, they then developed urban superchargers and installed them in parking garages and shopping malls, just to name a few of the different types of shopping opportunities. These have a different design and a lower output level at 72 kilowatts. Next comes the latest and greatest in Tesla supercharging, which is the V3 supercharger. The first one was installed at home base in Fremont, California, with a maximum output of 250 kilowatts. And although that was released in March of 2019, it really didn't become standard, at least in the United States, until late 2019. Through all of the 2020s, minus a handful of Gen 2 and urban superchargers, all superchargers installed in the US have been V3. Now that we understand what types of superchargers are out there, we now need to understand how they work. So let's start with the Gen 2 superchargers. Now these metal boxes are Gen 2 superchargers and have a max output of 120 or 150 kilowatts. These are supercharging stations, or stalls, and two of them share the output of one supercharger. So for example, if a station is plugged into a Tesla, it will get the maximum output of 120 or 150 kilowatts. However, if another station that shares the output of the supercharger is plugged into another Tesla, the first one could see a drop in its charging rate because now the 120 or 150 kilowatts is shared between the two cars. Now, on the other hand, the urban and V3 supercharging stations do not share power, meaning they all have the potential of reaching the maximum output of 72 or 250 kilowatts, depending on the type you're plugged into. Now, this is all important information because knowing which type of supercharging station you're plugged into can make or break you when it comes to charging etiquette. So, how do you know which type you've plugged into? Well, it's actually very easy. From your car, simply press the supercharging location and it will tell you the max output of that particular station. Gen 2 and V3 stations look identical and typically aren't labeled, at least the ones I've been to but there have been reports of 250 kilowatt signs on some of the V3 superchargers. Now, one quick way to see if it's a Gen 2 supercharger is to look at the bottom of the stall. If it's labeled in an A-B pattern, then it's a Gen 2. So for example, 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, and so on. 
Now with a V3 supercharger, they are labeled A, B, C, and D, and then it continues that pattern with different numbers. But if it goes past B in the pattern, then you can pretty much rest assured that it's a V3 supercharger. Now, urban superchargers are easy to identify because they are smaller and look like they've been cut out from the center of the Gen 2 or V3 supercharger, like that of a donut hole. I guess you could call them supercharger holes. Now that you have identified which type of supercharger you pulled into, let's talk about etiquette. And we'll start with Gen 2. Now when you pull in, you'll notice a label at the bottom of the supercharging stations. 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, and so on. Now this indicates which stations are sharing power. So for example, 1A and 1B are sharing power. So it's your job to do everything you can within your power, again, no pun intended, to make sure you don't pull up to a charging station that will reduce the charging rate of your fellow Tesla owner. So if someone is using 1A and you can avoid it, don't use 1B. It's that simple. Now here's an example from a recent trip that displays perfect etiquette in my opinion. When I pulled into the Ukiah Supercharger, which is a Gen 2, there is a Model 3 at Stall B on the far left. I decided to go to the opposite end and use Stall 1A. About 15 minutes later, a Model S pulled in and started using Stall 3A, leaving 2A or 2B available for full access to the 120 kilowatt output this supercharging station is capable of. Now I ended up leaving before putting one more person to the test, but this is a prime example of three Tesla owners that understand how this particular station works. Ideally, if one more person showed up, they would plug into 2A or 2B. Now if you were the fifth Tesla to pull up to this station, you would have to make a choice because no matter which one you use, it will share power with another car. Now the best way would be to ask someone who has been there the longest because they will most likely be at the charging rate that is lower than half of the maximum output. Otherwise, it's a guessing game and someone will have to be disappointed. Now if you happen to be the only one at a supercharger and someone plugs in right next to you, reducing your rate, most likely they don't know better. And it's a good idea to approach them with a smile on your face and educate them about supercharger pairing there is a good chance they will thank you for the knowledge and move to a different stall. Now, as I mentioned earlier, urban and V3 supercharging stations don't share power. However, until all or most Gen 2 superchargers are discontinued, if ever, then it's always best practiced to use the same etiquette rules just for good measure. Now, what if you pull up and all charging stations are being used? Well, first and foremost, take a look to see if there's any kind of line and get into it, if there is. If not, look around to see if there are others waiting in their cars. Most likely all of them know their place and your place in line. There might be that random person who isn't paying attention or doesn't care and may try to pull ahead in line. How you or anyone else waiting in line handles this kind of person is up to you. But for the most part, most people in the Tesla community are fairly courteous, but there is always that one that slips through the cracks. Now I've been to a lot of superchargers from Washington, Oregon, all the way down to Texas, and minus a few where all of the stalls are pull through, most of them require you to back in. If there happens to be one or two stalls at the supercharging station that require you to pull in nose first, those are reserved for people with bike racks on a tow hitch or pulling a trailer. Otherwise, they will either need to disconnect everything or take up several stalls. Now, it may seem easy to pull into one of these like this guy did at this V3 supercharger in Willows, but it's best to use one of the regular stalls just in case someone shows up pulling a trailer. Now, in his defense, he may not have even known and the chances of someone towing a trailer are slim, but it's always good to err on the side of caution. Now, when you plug into a busy supercharging station, your car will automatically set your charge limit to 80%, 
And although you can override that setting, it's usually more courteous to unplug with just enough reserve to get to your destination, whether it's home or the next supercharger. This way, people waiting in line will have shorter wait times. Besides, once you do reach 80%, your charging speed typically takes a big drop. If you happen to be shopping and your car is charged before you're done, it's always good etiquette to unplug your car and move it. Even if it's not a busy supercharger, sometimes they can fill up fast. And besides, Tesla does charge idle fees if you are plugged in and your car is charged. And last but not least, let's talk trash. I could have come up with a pun there, but didn't have the energy. More and more supercharging stations are beginning to include trash bins. However, there are still a lot out there that don't. And I can't tell you how many times I've almost stepped on someone's trash that they so graciously placed outside their door. There also seems to be a rule I don't know about that allows you to just place your trash next to the charging stall, thinking it will magically just disappear when I unplug and drive away. This is something that doesn't need to be said because it's straight up common sense, but I'm gonna say it anyway. If there isn't a trash can, hold on to your trash until you see one. It's that simple. So there is your crash course in supercharging etiquette. Now it's time for you to help spread this information to new owners and people waiting for delivery. It's basic information many of us take for granted, not really realizing it's not readily available unless you dig deep for it. Now I also realize there are a few things I may not have included in here, so be sure to share some of your bad etiquette experiences in the comment section below. Well, thank you all so much for watching and you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and stay positively charged.